Ladies and gents, welcome to OTFI. In this video, we're going to be doing a graphics card comparison on one application. I need to make that absolutely abundantly clear. This test is confined to the limit of one application. It's got nothing to do with gaming. It's got nothing to do with anything else other than what this channel is based on, and that's Autodesk Inventor. The question is, I have a workstation. It's a Dell Precision workstation with an E5 2620V2 Xeon in there, 16 gigs of RAM, and a solid state drive. What happens if I upgrade my graphics card from something like this here, which is a seven year old. Even seven years ago, this was a low end Quadro card, the Quadro 2000. And then I upgrade to something like this here, the AMD Fire Pro W9100, which is a modern current generation, $4,000 graphics card with 16 gig of onboard VRAM. It can power six simultaneous 4K displays. What happens when you upgrade from this to this? Or a Quadro M4000, which is a current generation Maxwell based Quadro card, or something like this, a GeForce card, the GTX 970, or a GTX 1070. The gap in generations from this here to a 1070 is phenomenal. In terms of the raw power output, a Quadro card pales into insignificance, this one here, compared to a 1070. So what happens? The test's gonna be based on two models. I've got a large assembly, 1,100 parts, and I'm gonna be doing two tests, frames per second output on the large assembly with no visual styles, no visual settings turned on, the second test is on a single part with no visual styles turned on and then with visual styles turned on, shadows, that kind of thing, image-based lighting environment. What happens with the frames per second output when you change the graphics card from something like this to something like this? Does it make a difference if you upgrade your graphics card or does it not make a difference? What do you think right now would make a difference? And before we get going, I just want to make a point of clarifying that Autodesk Inventor does not use any Quadro or Fire Pro specific features. It is not optimized in any way to be better performing on a Quadro card or a Fire Pro card over a GeForce card. There is no Quadro optimizations within Autodesk Inventor. I need to make that absolutely clear before we get going. So with that in mind, we're gonna start with the Quadro 2000. We're gonna do some frames per second tests on the Quadro 2000 card, and we're gonna slowly ramp our way up, changing the graphics card out, doing the exact same test on the exact same system, on the exact same model with all the other more powerful cards. And let's see what happens. So the first card up on the test bench is the Quadro 2000. Like I said, seven years ago, this thing was pretty poor, and it's even worse today. It comes in with CUDA core count of 192 CUDA cores, one gig of GDDR5 onboard video RAM with memory bandwidth coming in at 41.6 gigabytes per second, capable of powering only two displays at a time. This thing's pretty naff. At the bottom left of the screen, this is GPU Z monitoring the real time stats of the graphics card. And then up at the top right, we've got AMD's OCAT real time FPS counter giving us a real time indication of what the frames per second is being pushed out of the screen. And like I said, we're running two tests. Well, we're running four tests on two models. The first one is the BAC Mono full car assembly at 1,100 parts. One test with visual styles on, the other one with them off. And then the second round of testing is a single part. It's just a coil model with visual styles off on the first test and then the second test with the visual styles on. I'm not going to be giving a running commentary of what the scores are as we're going. I'm going to collate those at the end in a chart so you can see what things are standing like after all the tests have been performed. Now with the Quadro 2000, interestingly enough, the screen capture software was starting to struggle. So what you're seeing on screen is a little bit laggy, but the actual output on screen was pretty smooth. So the, the FPS monitoring with the Quadro 2000 was accurate. The next test is the Quadro M4000. This thing comes in from 192 CUDA cores up to 1,664 CUDA cores. It's eight gig of GDDR5 onboard video RAM with a memory bandwidth of 192 gigabytes per second. The generational gap between the 2000 and the M4000 is massive. These two cards are not even comparable in any any synthetic benchmarks would it be performed between these two cards. The Quadro M4000 would need a completely different chart altogether. It's not even comparable. So we're gonna be performing the exact same tests with this card, and then we're gonna, like I said, chart it at the end of the test with the 2000 and all the other cards. Now, 
Next up is the AMD Fire Pro W9100. This thing is a monster. It comes in with 16 gig of GDDR5 onboard RAM, 320 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. And uh, in terms of stream processors and CUDA cores, well, it's AMD, so it doesn't have CUDA cores. So it has 2816 AMD stream processors, which aren't really comparable to CUDA cores, but it's capable of pushing out six 4K simultaneous displays. This thing is a monster. It's an absolute beast of a graphics card again comparing this to the quadro 2000 card they're not even they can't even be placed on the same chart if performing synthetic benchmarks they're just night and day different so we're going to see how this card performs in inventor using the exact same models the exact same tests what kind of fps output are we getting to the monitor based on the different cards in the same system Next card on the bench is the MSI GTX 970 GeForce card coming in with 1,664 CUDA cores. It has arguably 4 gig of GDDR5 VRAM on the board and a memory bandwidth of 224 gigs per second as opposed to the 41.6 on the Quadro 2000 card. And uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you keep an account in the track of what's going on up at the top right from OCAT. But um, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting to see, but I'm going to be clicking it at the end in a chart. So this is the GeForce card. And like I said in the introduction, the uh, the software that we're being tested here is Autodesk Inventor, and it does not use any Quadro optimizations. The GeForce and the Quadro cards should be utilizing their raw power in this application because the although we are using Quadro drivers for the Quadro tests, Inventor is not optimized to use any Quadro software or hardware specific features. So what we're seeing here is actual GPU power on the bench. And the final card on the bench is the GTX 1070 current generation Pascal GeForce card. This comes in at 1920 CUDA cores. It has 8 gig of GDDR5 onboard video RAM and 256 gigs per second memory bandwidth. This thing is arguably one of the most powerful graphics cards on the market today, short of the 1080 and the Titan. And uh, we've seen what Inventor does with this card on the bench. We're using the current GeForce drivers as of today. And again, if you keep in track up the, up the top right, the results are quite interesting. So here's the results, here's the results for the large assembly. The large assembly with visual styles on and visual styles off. Starting with visual styles on, every single card on the bench produced the exact same output to the monitor, 10 frames per second, regardless of the graphics card installed into the system. Now, what do you think that says about the graphics card performance in Autodesk Inventor? What do you think that will give you if you upgrade your graphics card in Autodesk Inventor? Hmm. Yeah, I know. I know. With the shape, with the visual styles off, we were seeing a little bit of variance between 28 and 30 frames per second. But given the nature of monitoring frames per second in a CAD application, that is within reasonable tolerance. That's not to say that the Fire Pro W9 100 coming in at 28 frames per second is any better or worse than the GeForce 1070 or the M4000 or anything else for that matter. That is within reasonable tolerance of an FPS test. So, but pretty much no difference between any of the cars on the large assembly for the single part model what we did see was a little bit of variance when when visual styles were turned on 
the Quadro 2000 was pushing out 60 frames per second all the way up to 78 frames per second on the GeForce 1070 card. But given the actual statistical uh, variance between those two cards, if Inventor was utilizing the raw power of the graphics card, given the difference between those two cards, we should have seen a much, much bigger difference between those two cards. But the results are there in your face. You can see them yourself and then you can make your own conclusions from those with no visual styles enabled on the single part model the variance was absolutely minimal in fact the quadro 2000 was performing almost identically to the geforce 1070 card and uh, again given the actual statistical information for both of those cards you should be seeing something massively different if inventor utilizes the power of the GPU. All that being said, now you might be thinking, well, maybe this is a bug in the frames per second monitoring software. Maybe there's something else going on here. Maybe, I don't know. So what I did was took the 1070 out of the Dell workstation and I put it in my desktop, which is an i7-4790K at 4.6 gigahertz. It's got 32 gig of DDR3 RAM and an SM961 Samsung NVMe solid state drive. With the 1070 installed in a completely different workstation, we saw frames per second jump on the large assembly with no visual styles enabled from 30 up to 65 frames per second using the same graphics card in a different system. With visual styles enabled on the large assembly using the same graphics card, it went from 10 frames per second up to 25 frames per second. The same graphics card, but a different system. On the single part model, we saw a jump from 112 frames per second on the 1070 up to 191 frames per second on the 1070 on the single part with no visual styles enabled then with visual styles enabled 78 frames per second up to 140 frames per second with the same graphics card so conclusion time i can only let you make up your own mind based on what you've seen here but i think it's a safe bet to say that autodesk inventor absolutely does not use the gpu in any way shape or form when processing large assemblies visually on screen everything is entirely CPU based. It is based on the CPU that you have in your system. Upgrading a graphics card will make no difference to the visual performance within Autodesk Inventor. But, asterisk time. You do need to pay attention to the onboard video RAM. If you're using a Quadro 2000 with only one gig of video RAM, if you're processing massive assemblies on screen and you've got multiple monitors, then that one gig of video RAM will cap out pretty quickly. So utilizing a modern card with more VRAM will only yield benefits with heavier workloads. Also, you're not just using Autodesk Inventor when you're working on a PC. You might have different applications. You might want to play games now and again. So just buying a budget card and going, well, oh, Inventor's fine, that's all I need. Well, yeah, it might be the case, but your PC might end up doing other things that you can't foresee right now. So it always makes sense to buy the best card that you can and stay on the current architecture based on other applications that you might use in the future so that's the test over and done hopefully that puts to bed the argument about what happens in autodesk inventor when you upgrade your graphics card from something crap up to something which is at the top of the stack the answer is no difference whatsoever thank you very much guys hopefully this video was useful for a few people uh, Patreon link is in the description down below if you want to support the channel with a monthly contribution uh, head over to the Twitch channel if you want to see me live stream and uh, get into the 3D connection Space Mouse Pro wireless giveaway which is currently running as of today if you want to get entered in for that there's a video on the channel which will tell you what you need to do to get entered into that competition and I'll see you all in the next video toodles